Welcome back to the Let's Stay Together talk show. Now here is your host, Reverend Rick McCain and author Brendan McCain. All right, welcome back to Let's Stay Together Talk. I'm your host, Reverend Rick, along with my baby, my girl, my boo, Arthur Brenda McCain. Hey, baby, what you got for me? Oh, for making marriage work, we have the lovely TV attorney, Tremeka D. Dahl. She is the legal analyst with TV One Network, Discovery ID, and Oxygen Network. Welcome to the McCain train, Miss Tremeka. Good evening. I'm Tramika. I know it's oh, spelled Tramika. like Oh, Okay. <laughs> I thought we were talking to. <laughs> well, all I know is that we got a celebrity on the show. Right, right, right. Oh, it's Tramika. Listen, okay. It's all right. I know who you're talking with. Right. <laughs> How you it's doing today? Right. <laughs> you doing good today? Yes, I am. Thank you. It's really an honor and a pleasure to be on your show this evening. Thank you so much for bringing it, uh, bringing the message to the family and keeping a family unit strong. Well, I trying. really love you. I've been listening to your show about five minutes before coming on the air this evening. And I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. And we don't hear the message anymore, the family mm. unit message anymore on our radios and on the media like we used to on our on our radio so you know we have podcasting we don't even have the radio anymore wow. uh, in nashville say. they don't have that anymore that's shocking well we have radio stations but you know nowadays we have more what we call podcasting so we don't even have the traditional radio dial you know when we talk to our children about the radio they say oh you know you mean podcasting we don't wow. have the traditional radio dial, and so I can remember being a child listening to Saturday and Sunday morning on the radio, right. listening to gospel and the message of the word from Reverend, you know, Reverend and Sunday morning music and, and, and church yes. music and yeah. radio, and about uh, the family unit. My mother and my late father were married 40 years okay. before Danny passed, and so... It is so wonderful to be able to, to discuss things like long-term marital relationships and things like that that are, in today's time, simply are a rarity. Yeah, that's true. And it's just an honor to, to be invited on your show. Uh, well, I really appreciate being here. We are, Thank we're you so honored much. to have you on the show. You know, we're talking about marriage, and this is the Make It Marriage Work segment. And so a lot of times, you know, what happens sometimes when, you know, unfortunately when marriages don't work, sometimes uh -huh. we get on the wrong side of marriage uh, and people, you know, um, will get to the point where they need some kind of, a, you know, assistance uh, with uh -huh. uh, th their marriages. So uh, can you talk a little bit about, you know, you know, what happens when someone, when a marriage seems to break apart a little and, uh, they're leading to the wrong side of marriage? I, I can in the sense that, unfortunately, that does happen. I, When I usually see that happen, I, I can say I've never been married myself. I am single. I've never been married. I, unfortunately, in cases in, that I have analyzed in, in my work, and, and, and you've seen me on TV One on a show called Fatal Attraction, yes. It, the ultimate has happened. Somebody's died. I have researched and analyzed homicide. Mm. Uh, some kind of ultimate action has been taken. Somebody has taken someone's life. It has even gone past the point of even somebody filing a divorce or, or some kind of dissolution of, of marriage, unfortunately. Uh, and that, and that's, that's a sad thing. Yeah, that, that is there a, is, when, when people are married, and, and this is where, in some jurisdictions, when people are married, and that's why I, I would encourage, okay, and, and I don't want to pass judgment. Let me say that. We say what? The, the, the book says judge not, okay? I would always encourage, just because in the home in which I grew up, I would always encourage a marriage. And, and not not for, not for holy reasons, you know, not, not trying to be holy, okay, because I've never been married myself. <laughs> I always encourage, you know, I'm not trying to be holy, but I encourage marriage because marriage gives you legal rights. Amen. Okay? When you're married, 
you have a legal right to somebody else's stuff. That <laughs> <laughs> stuff. Yeah. yeah. You remember Medea? And, and, and they were married, right? Medea and the, uh, Kimberly and Elise was married to Steve Harris. So I don't even know the character's name. Steve Harris wanted to tip out on them. Yep. And Medea had a chainsaw, right? Mm-hmm. And Medea was going to the house cutting the stuff in half. You have a legal right. I'm being facetious in a way, but you have legal right to that stuff if you want to dissolve the marriage. When there is a dissolution in absence of that marriage, it's a little dicey, okay? So With children that are born under a marriage, those children have legal protections. They're covered under that legal protection. Like in Tennessee, when there's a divorce, they're even, they're even a different court. Children born under marriage, when there's a divorce, they go to circuit court, okay, or even mm-hmm. chancery court in certain counties of Tennessee. Children not born in their marriage, when the parents break up, it's handled in juvenile court. Wow. Oh, okay, yes. they learn something yes. new. <laughs> I never yes. thought it's of the, it that way. Yes. Okay, oh, Tramika. Yes. Now, I'm going to make a shot it's get this right because I'm a stickler on it. Am I pronouncing it right? Tramika, right? Hey. That's right. Okay, Tamika. question yes. for you. When it comes to the mm-hmm. common law marriage, a child born in a common law marriage, they I, what's the rights with them with that? If something happened and they have to separate or do, can you get a divorce in a common law marriage? I have not done the research I should have done in enough time. Okay. Common, see, common law, it's, common law is like, how do I explain it? It's like, almost like what they call palimony. Mm. And I tell you, a famous case is palimony. Remember the guy, his name was, oh, goodness, he played Liberty Valance. Lee Marvin. Okay, remember the man, Lee Marvin? I remember Lee Marvin, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. He, who shot Liberty Valance? Right, I, re- I remember that. Guy. A dirty dozen. Dirty, yeah, white hair, real tough guy. I like one of my favorite actors. Oh, what y'all <laughs> talking about? He was sued. Under one of the first cases for palimony, mm-hmm. where folks live together and they hold themselves out as husband and wife, it's clear they were together a long time, they helped each other out, they, they shared assets, but they just never either had the time or took the time to go through the, the marital process, and they break up. I, that, I think that's what common law marriage is. Yeah. They hold themselves out to the public as man and wife, but for whatever reason, they don't get a license. I, I think, and then we can, I can come back once yeah. I do the research if you want me to. I think that's what common law marriage is. I think that's what common law marriage yeah. is. Don't but, quote me on that. I will tell don't you this. You brought back some old memories because uh, – I remember uh, who shot uh, Liberty Valance, and uh, I think uh, James Jim Stewart was in that, and John Wayne was in that movie. So <laughs> and Tracy and me right. was like, who? And, and, and I love that right. movie, you know, uh, a lot. Right. So so we got a we got a situation where someone is on the wrong side, and they they come to court. Uh, yes, and and they, what is the process that happens there? Now, see, you're gonna get me in trouble. I'm not practicing law because. Tennessee is not a common law jurisdiction. Tennessee says either you're married or you're not. Amen. You're married or I like you're Tennessee. Living. Tennessee says Tennessee is not. A, we, we, we don't even, because it's messy. And that's what Tennessee says. We don't recognize common law because it's too messy. We're not going to go through and try to parcel out. Okay, these are your tater chips. These are your shoes. Your tater chips. <laughs> She's a southern beauty, darling. <laughs> right, right. We're not going to figure out who's Cheetos and who. Right. You like Cheetos. You like Doritos. And look, if it's a, mar- it's a marriage license somewhere, we can go down and look at what the law, the statute says about division of marital property where there's a marriage license, right? Because there's a statute. That says when they say I do, marital property is divided this way, that way, up, down. The children have this many days. You have this kind. You go to mediation for this amount of time. Final decree. The judge signs it. You divorce. The end. 
Simple, clean and dirty. Quick so, and dirty, it's clean. So, Lady T, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm just going to call you Lady T because I'm not going to cut up your name. <laughs> so, um, I'm just going to say this. Now, you're, 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 doing, you're doing like a, a show with your TV judge, correct? It was a pilot, okay? I did a pilot. I did yeah. a pilot. Yeah, and, 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 and we, we already calling those things as be not as though they were. We know that's going to come, up, come to pass. Well, I hope, and thank you, and, mm-hmm. and all the kind words and prayers that you can send up, I really would appreciate it, and and so I count that, because mm-hmm. I did it, yeah, I did it, it's, it's, in, it's in the works, so I, I appreciate that, and anything that you can do and say to, to, to send good words upstairs, I, I really would appreciate that. Thank you, thank you very much, yes, sir. We yes, would sir. definitely do that. Now, in a situation where, say, Brenda is getting on my nerves over here, you know, oh, wow. I, I'm <laughs> I'm ready to get rid of a lady, T, and I'm I'm tired. Oh, we are, we on the wrong side of marriage, uh, and I and I come to to you now. You know, we're fortunate enough to be on this you know television show that's been on the air for like about ten years now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm calling it already out there, and 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 we come to you. Uh, how do I do? Do you ever go about trying to reconcile with the person, or at the point where they get to you as a an attorney or a judge, is it almost like there's no reconciliation? Ooh, well, first I, you know, I oh, at first I wouldn't advise don't oh, don't don't do that don't do that. At first I was <laughs> she down. is cracking me out. Friend would get on you. I, I, first of all, I'd I say you being facetious. I'd say you were playing. Cause I wouldn't believe <laughs> I said it. I don't know. I don't know any of y'all. But first, I talked to y'all very briefly. First of all, she's too sweet. I would not believe this lady would get on your nerves. First of all, oh no, she this, never I'm, does. <laughs> yeah, no, never. Right. <laughs> she would never get on your nerves. She is too nice. Number one. Number two, as, as the courts in Tennessee do. In cases of, of of a divorce, they automatically send you to mediation. Automatically, mm. the state of Tennessee. Wow. Well, there's a divorce pending. They say, "I want a divorce." You make me sick. He makes me sick. Ah, oh, blah blah blah. blah. <laughs> they, they automatically, the mandatory. The the what the uh, divorce court will say is before we even start divorce, they mandatory make you go to mediation, and then you have to go through the process. And they have to show a report of the results of mediation, whether successful or unsuccessful. So they actually, in real life, in the state of Tennessee, you have to go to mediation. So the, the, the couple has to at least try to show, under pain of contempt, to work it out. You know, that, that's, so, that's awesome because, I mean, I, I don't think that's the case in Illinois. I mean... We got, you know, no fault, divorce, all kind of things. You can, you can get a divorce within 24 hours around in, in the state of Illinois, it seems like. And so it's good to see that, you know, this, you know Tennessee uh, and, and Nashville is, is trying to do a reconciliation. You know, where... Well... Go ahead. Yeah, yeah well, I would... It, you know, I, I don't know, and I don't know. I would need to look at legislative intent. I'll probably have to go back and actually look at the what they call legislative intent to see why that was put in the statute to make mediation mandatory. I myself, unless there's some kind of ex- extenuating circumstances, because I'm sure it's in the court's discretion. Like if that, let's say it's extraordinary violence, like there's proof that there's attempted murder, and I'm sure the court would then for whatever good reason, waive mediation. Like, you know, there's, I'm sure there's certain reasons why it would be a waste of time to, to, to mandate the parties to do mediation, okay? But I, I think that it, it is a good reason. Like, let's say the couple is just ticked off at each other, for example, for reconcilable differences, you know, because in Tennessee you have to state a reason for wow. divorce. And Right. Oh, yeah, you just can't walk in and say, I want a divorce. You have to state, I think it's like one of eight causes. And if you say, if you just say irreconcilable differences, like 90% of the irreconcilable, like one of the causes is yeah. reconcilable differences. That is basically where they don't really want to go into it and they just say irreconcilable mm-hmm. differences. That's, that's almost I saying, that's that almost that saying quick pro tro. What was it? Quick pro tro? Mm-hmm. Quick. I can't speak now like you do. Quick pro <laughs> quo. 
I think that's how you say it. Mm-hmm. That's how you say it. Okay. I think I'm good. So basically, it's just everybody uses that as the, the thing that they default to. Mm-hmm. When they right, want to right. Deal. Which is almost like no fault. That's yeah. almost saying no fault. Well, where the parties say something kind of neutral, like irreconcilable differences. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The court is, is most likely going to mandate mediation. But if the parties say something like, well, there's, a, there's on the, in the record that's an attempted murder, or there's clearly domestic violence, mm-hmm. and there is, let's say, temporary restraining order because somebody like tried to kill yeah. somebody. <laughs> well, probably the court is going to bypass mediation. I'm, I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I'm shooting from the hip here because, again, I'm not really a domestic relations attorney, okay? But I, I'm just saying, if I were a, a judge handling a, 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 um, a divorce case, to cause say first, y'all, and, 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 and domestic relations can, because you're dealing with human beings and hearts and minds, okay, can get very nasty very quickly because, as they say, divorce is a funeral without a corpse. Mm. And sometimes it is. No, let me stop. Mm. Don't say it, is. it is. That's what that, they say. It's so a true. funeral without a court. Mm. It is a death of a relationship. Yeah. That's what my counselor said. Yep. And yep. folks get hot. And you've seen in, in these in the in the news all the time. People kill their lawyer. Over. Wow. Oh yeah. Divorce. Wait a minute. Did I hear you right? Did you just say people be yes. killing their lawyers? Yeah. Cool. They're killing their lawyers. Sure. They, I've seen cases in, in Tennessee. People have gone out in the parking lot and shot and killed their attorneys. Because it wasn't going their way, I'm assuming, huh? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. What? It is a bit because of the money involved. They lose their children. Think about it. People lose parental rights. They lose money, property. And see, it's not like when you die, you don't know what happens to your stuff when you die. Right. Right. <laughs> Now, but think about think about when you're divorced. You've been married 10, 15 years, okay? No, no, no prenup. You've been married for about 10 or 15 years. You're the breadwinner. You've been married to this person 10, 15 years. They got lost weight, got cute, whatever. <laughs> you know, you remember, you remember, like, hey, they were fat when you married them. Fat, fat and funny looking. <laughs> and they got new, everything new hair, and you know, you taught them how to do this. Now you taught them how to work out. You taught them how to get new hair. You took them to the dentist, you know, and then they're gonna divorce you. No prenup. Mm, no prenup. And they get somebody else, and they get your stuff that that you say is your stuff. Then you know, again, this is your perspective. They get hair under whatever statute they get hair. Then you find out there was somebody else. They get half of what you believe is your stuff. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Now, again, us standing on the outside, we think getting mad is irrational. Because, again, we're standing on the outside. But you're in the heat of battle. You might get a little mad. Yeah. But it's no you prenup, might, though, in that. There's like no prenup, but they walk off with your stuff and give it to somebody else that you think is uglier. And older than you. Think about it. Uglier, older than you. And they look better. They remember. Remember when you met them, they were fat, funny looking. You taught them the game. You taught them how to dress. You taught them how to talk. You taught them how to act. You helped them get that education. You helped them get that job. You taught them how to look. You you introduced them to that social circle. Come on, Betty Broderick. Hello. <laughs> remember Betty? Remember Betty? Do you remember Betty Brock? Come on, I love Lifetime movies. Y'all, y'all remember Lifetime Movie Network? Remember Betty Broderick? Remember oh, Betty Broderick? I remember that. That's a Lifetime yeah. movie right there. She yeah. went off. <laughs> she had all those children. Mm-hmm. They were both broke. They had their first child. Sure, she said, "I remember. We couldn't afford a crib." We put her in the top drawer of the chest of drawers. Mm-hmm. I put him through law school and medical school. He became the biggest, baddest medical malpractice lawyer in La Jolla, California. And got a younger version of her. Of her. 
Mm. Yeah, because that, that can definitely make you, you know, be on the wrong side of marriage when, when you see something yeah. like that. And it can make a person, you know, lose perspective for a, for a brief moment and do something uh, that can be, you know, you know, unfortunate that they don't want to do at that time, but they they will do. So, you know, in this Making Marriage Work segment, we're talking about being on the wrong side of marriage. And, and you know, some of the things that you may want to watch out for uh, that you don't want to happen to you. And, and unfortunately, yes. uh, Lady T, uh, people will get to a point where they, you know, they've invested so much in a person and then they walk away. Uh, that makes me think of waiting to exhale, that, you know, when the movie happened on that. Wasn't it? Oh, wait, yeah. You, yes, know, sir. you know, and that happened, yes, and, you know, and that, you know, you, you, you put in all that time and effort into that person and uh, uh, they will, you know, they'll get up, you know, upset. Now, when that happens, uh, what would you say, at, you know, as as an uh, an attorney? What would you tell that individual, maybe to make sure that their 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 cooler heads would prevail? As an as an, as as her lawyer, if I was her lawyer, and, and let's and again talking now again talking to Betty Broderick, you can I have I have to remind myself to judge not right. We have to we're talking from. Because I, I'm, I'm a Christian, I, I'm a Christian, and I always tell people I'm not the best one. Now I, I'm <laughs> this, I'm not very good. I'm, I am a humble, terrible Christian. I'm just not the, I'm not the best one I could be. I'm working on it. I'm a work in progress. <laughs> judge not. I know I can't judge. <laughs> but poor Betty, because Betty, 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 but Betty, I don't know if Betty tried as hard as she could. Okay, but poor Betty, but Betty went through. The whole Bar Association of La Jolla, California. Betty was, as a, if you really read the book and everything, Betty was very hard to deal with. Betty wouldn't listen to anybody, okay, number one. Betty said that because her husband was so politically powerful, no one would represent her. The other side of the coin was that Betty wouldn't listen to anybody. Uh, you know, they always say the truth is in the middle somewhere, okay. Sometimes you have to say, look, think of the consequences. Is it is it really worth losing your freedom? Okay. If you do it, okay, okay, Betty. Is it worth losing everything just to ex- exalt, resolve or just to release that anger, all that anger that you have? over losing Dan Broderick and what you feel is your social standing, okay? So, you know, (laughs) Betty Broderick's out of control. Remember, she she drove the SUV through the house Mm -hmm. because he did give her everything financially she wanted. And she was still high. Remember, she drove the car through the house. Didn't, you know what, Sharika, I'm I'm trying to think, sorry to interrupt you, but I'm saying she's giving a prime example of a great analogy of um, a marriage gone wrong with this story because it it, it hit the wave line, the, the wave line, TV line real big because this was one, like you said, he gave her everything, but I think it was the mental breakdown. And that's really with a marriage going wrong. He gave her some, yeah. but he took the kids away too, I remember, right? Because this is a story that yeah. she went into the house and shot them in cold-blooded in bed. In bed. A, right. And so it's like you said, it's not even worth all of that. But it, it took a mental toll on her. And that's truly a marriage gone wrong when you gave up everything to help this person to succeed. And then they just trade you in or discard you like a regular, a dirty dish towel or something. She wasn't worthy of him then. So, I mean, you're breaking this down with this, this storyline. It's making me want to watch that movie again. It was well, see, cause it was two sides. You and really, because with situations like that, they say what well, is two sides to every story, and they say what well, the truth is somewhere in between. Because mm-hmm. this is Be- what Betty Broderick says, and she became a folk hero for, for a lot of divorced women. Betty Broderick says we were broke, we were poor, we were we had nothing. We had all these children together. I gave up my I gave up my career because I was college educated like he was. I stayed home to raise four children. Our first child, we were so poor, we put her in the top drawer of the chest of drawer because we couldn't buy a crib. I raised the children. He went to medical school. I put, I put him 
I had worked two or three jobs through medical school and law school. And he became the biggest, baddest malpractice lawyer in La Jolla, California. And we enjoyed going up through the ranks together. We made money together. We enjoyed the lifestyle together. We did. And and, and the, the Broderick name together. And he was Dapper Dan Broderick. He, you know, he had the rose and the lapel. That's how everybody knew Dan Broderick by the rose and the lapel, okay? And so the family got rich together. You know, he became president of the, uh, I think it was Southern California Bar Association together. Okay, this was Southern California. You know, that's where L.A. is. The big dollar bar association. This was a lot of money, okay, together. And so he started seeing Linda Cocaina, who was, from all accounts, uh, he was, uh, she was his secretary. Everybody said she looked just like Betty, a little, a younger Betty Broderick. And she would ask him all the time, are you sleeping with her? Are you sleeping with her? He would say, no, 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 no. And, and, and he would always deny it. And finally, one day, just to make a man, he said, well, guess what? Yeah, I was. Yeah, you know, being a jerk. One day, he did. He admitted it. And he said, yeah, I was the whole time having an affair, okay? And, and this, I'm, I'm giving the long story short here, version. But he admitted it. Not only did he admit it, he admitted it in a way to let her know that he was lying the whole time. Yeah. That he called her fat, dumb, lazy, sad, stupid, that she starved herself for weeks to get down to a size 8. Now, she was like in her late 40s, okay, but she starved herself to get down to a size 8 to compete with this younger woman and to be in her late 40s to get down to a size 8 for a woman in her late 40s having had four children was no small task, okay. So, again, as you as you mentioned, Ms. Brenda, the mental toll that Betty Broderick was put through when he finally served her with divorce papers, that, that the fact that she snapped, people who sympathized with Betty Broderick, I think the people that sympathized with her said, well, the fact that she snapped was not, it wasn't that far a leap. That consequence was not, it, she didn't have that far to go. Yeah. She was already at her breaking point. Dan Broderick knew what he was doing. He was an attorney. And attorneys know how to play those mind games. <laughs> yeah. I'm an attorney. Okay. <laughs> let, let's keep it real. Come on, y'all. So let, let me ask Kids you folk. Let me ask you this. What uh, before we, you know, go because we're gonna um go to commercial break. Tell us about okay. some things that you're you're doing. Oh. Yes, um I have been practicing law thirteen years now. Um Throughout my career in practicing law, I've always practiced in the government sector. Uh, from I started out working in criminal court uh, as a judicial clerk, and I currently now practice uh, in the nonprofit setting, in the quasi-governmental setting. I have practiced between human resources, to, from human resources to transportation, to white-collar fraud, prosecution, to... Um, uh, let's see, I've done Medicaid eligibility and uh, like an administrative law judge, uh, administrative law judge context. I've done just about a little bit of everything. Uh, and in my media life, uh, I study, I have studied uh, sports law, diversity, and inclusion, particularly with respect to increasing the number of minorities in the front office uh, C-suite, or what they call like CIO, CEO, uh, head coaching context. So I'm very passionate about increasing the number of female and minority faces in um, pro sports front offices. So that I'm very passionate about that. Yeah. Uh, so like in Illinois, I know you have Chicago around there. So like when Lovey Smith became head coach over there, the Bears, I was like, yay! So hopefully... <laughs> We'll have more minority faces in, in front offices in, in our um, in our uh, head coaching offices in our professional sports leagues. 
uh, in the, today and in the future. So that, that's what I'm, I'm very passionate about. Well, yeah. we, hey, we appreciate you. We're going to definitely have you on the show again so we can talk more about, you know, the things that we're passionate about. And we're going to be praying for that pilot to uh, come to fruition where you can uh, be on uh, television and uh, uh, show everybody the awesome talent that God has given you. Well, thank you, and thank you for having me on. I, just, I love talking with y'all. I, I, love, I love listening to the show. Thank you, know, you again for having me on. We, you will definitely have you again, and thank you for being on Let's Stay Together Talk. Thank you, Shamika. Enjoyed right. you. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Take care. We'll talk to you soon. I have Brittany reach out to you so we can reschedule it for another day coming soon, okay? Okay, thanks again. Yes, please. Right. Okay. Bye. Thank you very Bye. much. Thank you. Hey, we're about to go to commercial break. We're a little bit bit behind. We're going to go to commercial break, and we'll be right back after these breaks.